Happy Easter to everyone! So today, after Brother Bob or Pastor Bob gives us our Easter sermon, we are going to have an Easter egg hunt for the littles. Um, so if you want to stay afterwards and watch that, uh, if you've got a little, uh, be sure that they are out there um, in the arena hunting those eggs, and we're excited about that. Uh, this coming Thursday at 7.30 is the Buck Out. Woo! It's a $20 registration fee if you want to ride. We encourage you to come and just be a participant and enjoy uh, the message that's given and the excitement that goes on on Thursday nights. Let's see. Next Saturday is a Jubilee. Woohoo! So there's going to be lots of fun out at Ben Gill Park. I think it's still called Ben Gill Park. Um, but they, there's going to be vendors, booths, rides, food galore. And our church has a booth there. So um, if you're out, uh, if you're not going to participate and be at the booth and you're out there with your family just enjoying stop by and say hi to those that are going to be serving in the booth um, and i think there's still time if you want to sign up the little pink sheets back there if you want to sign up for a time to be at the booth and share about rafter j cowboy church and jesus um, i'm sure pastor rob would appreciate that see uh, the next men's ministry is a uh, may 13th um it's at 6 30 it's a meal and message and they have a wonderful time um, on those friday nights so um please come and bring somebody and uh, your son grandson neighbor co-worker whoever um, just bring them out then sunday may 15th is the next elder meeting and um, it opens up to any of us members at 6 p.m you can come and uh, talk um, to the elders and bring anything to them and then that meeting closes at 7 p.m and they do a business meeting then this sunday uh our next fifth sunday is sunday may 29th it's right after we have worship um a fifth sunday worship and then we after the service we have a meal we have lunch potluck and so we're asking you to bring a dish um, the church will provide the meat and the tea, and then if you guys will bring desserts, breads, whatever your specialty is, and just share it so that we all um, can be here and have lunch and fellowship together. Um, and that's all I have on the announcements. So I actually have two pondering moments to share with y'all today. So um, I was thinking as I was in Walmart, I kept thinking of Easter, and all the things they have up, out representing Easter. You know, uh, you don't see a lot of crosses, you don't see a lot of talk about Jesus, we're seeing more and more, but mostly you see baby chicks and bunny rabbits. So I kind of was pondering on that, and I learned something about rabbits, which I don't think I paid enough attention in, um, in school about it, but did you know a male rabbit was called a buck? I didn't know that. A female is called a doe, and the baby or the youth is called a bunny. So, and they're also considered a hare, H-A-R-E. I got to pondering about that, and I just wondering, wondering, thinking about all the things that rabbits do and how unpredictable they are. So, I have a question for you. What do you call a line of rabbits that are hopping backwards? the answer for you. It's a receding hairline. <laughs> and here's my other pondering moment. So I'm going down 148, and I'm, you know, kind of sometimes don't pay attention. I'm just in my own little world. And I see a little chick on the side of 148. Little chick. And he's hopping, and he's going across 148. And I'm thinking, why is the chick crossing the road? And it dawned on me, he needed to be with his peeps.
Tit on the roof here around. Are y'all happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Woo! Well, you're expecting a blessing this morning because we're going to praise his name. We're going to go on back in the hymn book and start off with a little bit of after cross. Amen.
guy just a minute. Brother Bob's going to get the other microphone together. And he's going to be taking prayer requests right after that, so y'all can get those ready. Uh, if it is your first time ever be here with us, we just want to welcome you here this morning and just say welcome home. So good to have y'all here today. Uh, we do things a little differently. We don't pass an offering plate, but the Lord leads you to bless the ministry in that matter. There's a little wooden church house back there by the back door. And right there by that church house are some little green sheets of paper. You might see these in the seats ahead of you. If uh, the Lord speaks to your heart today, you come to a decision for him for the first time, please take just a moment, fill that little green sheet out, and drop it back there in the church house. It's the most important decision you can come to on this side of the turn. And we just want to stand with you as you start on that journey. <laughs> Brother Bob almost looks ready. I am ready. Any prayer requests, guys, on this fine Easter morning? Yeah. Unspoken. Unspoken. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Are you praying for the people over in Ukraine? Uh, pray for this nation. Pray for a revival. Yep. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Yep. Just keep the king praying for my dad. Okay. And, uh, and my aunt Wanda, that's got, we think it's dementia, and she's getting worse. Okay. Anybody else? Nobody else. My cousin lost her husband last week. Oh His birthday was yesterday. He would turn 50 from Mass Heart Okay. Sir. Uh, May 13th is uh, Mother's Day. We hope the final cut will be back. So. Oh, okay. Good deal. Anybody else? Alright, there's nobody else. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we love you so, so very much. Father, this day we just reflect on you. Father God, you heard the prayer request. Lord, just, uh, Father, I believe that you're so awesome. And Father God, in your omnipotence, Father God, and just uh, uh, that you knew what our prayers were going to be before we even uttered them. Lord, you knew what they were going to be before we even knew we needed them. Father, and I believe that you put into motion the things that would need to happen in order to answer those prayers ahead of time. Father, we thank you for that. We say thank you for your sovereignty. Oh, just, uh, Father, just, uh, just, we don't know where else to turn but you. You're the only person that can answer our prayers. You know, Buddha can't do it, and Muhammad can't do it, but Lord Jesus, you can. You paid the price on that cross so that we could have a relationship with the Father once again. And you are in that throne interceding for us. So Father, Lord Jesus, we ask that you would present these, these uh, petitions before God, your Father. Father, just, uh, I can't help but think about maybe there's someone here lost today. Father, I can't think of a better day to ask Christ to come into our, into our hearts, Lord, than uh, this day when we celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of, of our risen Lord. Father, I'm just uh, asking the officer that maybe there's somebody that's lost here today. Maybe they're walking here on YouTube or, or uh, on Facebook Live. Father God, I'm asking that you just hear their, their cries. Father God, move them. Father God, just to, you say in your word that, uh, Lord Jesus, that no one comes to you except the Father draws them. So, Father, I'm asking that you would draw them now. Father God, let them know that the emptiness that they, they have, they've been trying to fill it for so many different things, but nothing is going to fit there. And I pray by the end of this service that they would cry out to your son and ask him to come into, your, into their lives and forgive them of their sins. And it's in his precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, kiddos, you are dismissed. Guys, i tell you what. I usually do this every year. You know, this is the crown of thorns. It's what was put on our Lord's head by the Roman soldiers. They were mocking Him. But I don't think they realize how close to the truth they are. They were with this, with this crown of thorns. The thorns represent sin. They always have, from the beginning of, the, of uh, the garden, when God cursed the ground. Thorns have been in existence. They're a curse and they are a sin. They represent sin. This is locust thorns. And if you look at them, 
Each thorn is in the form of a cross. So it's fitting that the, the locust thorn should be uh, what we make the cross out, I mean the, the uh, crown out of. It's fitting because the Bible says that Jesus became sin for us. Became sin for us. Amen. So, and when the weight of the world sins from the, the creation of time to the end of time, the whole world, all of that sin went on our Lord when He was hanging on that cross. This represents that sin. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pass this thing around. And uh, be careful with it, please. But if you get pricked, just think about how that would feel on your head. And then somebody just cramming it down on your head. Careful, careful. And just pass it around. I want everybody to get a good look at that thing. You know, usually, on, uh, I've done a many, many sermons. Where I go through the prophecies and uh, about the cross and leading up to that moment. Psalm, if you want to look at some of them, Psalm 22 is a real good one. It speaks about our Lord being hung on that cross. He looks down and he can see his bones. Depending to that tree. But I want to go to a little bit different direction this time. I want to focus in on one of the times that our Lord and Savior, after He was risen from the grave, risen back to life, that He, uh, he uh, uh, went to the... He appeared before His disciples. Three different occasions that happened. The first one was right after the grave. When the, uh, the ladies that uh, went to the grave and and I will read this because it is fitting. They went to the grave and they found angels at that grave. He says in verse 5, In their fright, the, uh, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. After that, the ladies ran back to the disciples and reported to them what they had seen. The disciples didn't believe them. They thought it was just nonsense, the Bible says. So, and then Peter, though well, he ran back to the throne, to the uh, to the tomb to see what they were talking about. And he just sure enough he found just the linens there, but he did not find our Lord. He was he had been sure enough risen. But the then Jesus appears for the first time to the two gentlemen on the Emmaus Road. Emmaus Road. And uh, they were talking about Jesus. And he, pulled, he, he just uh, kind of eased himself up beside him. Asked him, what are y'all talking about? And said, man, ain't you heard? Are you just a visitor here? Ain't you heard about what has happened? And they went to one head Ted and said, you know, we, we thought he was the guy who was going to deliver Israel. But now, it, it just hadn't happened. They were down in the mouth about what, what had happened. They didn't understand it. So Jesus stuff began to explain to them the prophecies that needed, and, and kind of scolded them just a little bit, telling them that they were just slow about the pro, understanding the prophets. They said that He had to come and die and rise again. So then they urged him to go with them because he was acting like he didn't want to go. He had somewhere else to go and it was getting dark. So he went with them and uh, they sat down for a meal and he broke the bread, gave thanks, broke the, and gave thanks and just started handing it to them. Then they realized that it was Jesus. Amen. So they did the same thing. They went back to the eleven. And told them exactly what had happened to them. And now we find out we're, we're at the second time that, uh, that, he, uh, that Jesus appeared to his disciples. And there was a third time. The third time is spoken of in John's Gospel in, in chapter 21. And that's when uh, they were out fishing. Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. And then the other disciples said, we'll go with you, some of them. And Jesus was on the shoreline. He had a campfire there ready to, ready to cook some fish. Actually, he'd already prepared some. And he asked him, have you caught anything? 
And they said, no. He said, cast it over to the right and you'll catch some. And John said to uh, the Peter, he said, that's our Lord, that's the Lord. And, John, and Peter immediately jumped out of the boat and just started swimming to shore just to, just to, uh, just to get to our Lord. But I want to focus on, this, on the second one. That's what our scriptures I want to speak about today. You know, this is the miracle season. It's a miracle season. Uh, Jesus per performed many, many miracles. But this is by far the greatest miracle that he ever performed. Is when he rose back to life. God, let me tell you something. Jesus didn't need to come back to life for himself. He came down from eternal, eternal, from the eternal, to be with the temporal. Amen? Where we exist. To walk with us. He didn't need to die. He was already eternal. He did that for us. Each and every one of us. Because we needed life. We needed new life. So we needed, we needed to have a victory over death. And by Him right, raising back to life, He gave us that, that victory over death. That through Him, we too can have life and have eternal life. Like He does. Amen? Greatest miracle ever. And let me tell you something, this is the most pivotal time in history, in the human experience. It is the most important. I shared with the, uh, the folks this morning at sunrise service, and I believe I did at Buckout too, uh, Thursday night. We celebrate this day, and if you think about it, it really is the day that stood still. Because all of the, it, as old as the, as the world is, so it's estimated what, 7,000 years that we can go back to the creation? The Bible speaks of. All of that is counting down. You start out at 7,000 years and you go to 699,000 uh, years and down and down and down until you get to this pivotal moment in history when Christ died on the cross. Amen? And once he died and he gave up the ghost, the Bible says, then time began to, to go to count up rather than back. From down. Instead of down, it's counting up. You had to count down and then count up. It's the most important time of the season, of the world, period. Amen? When you think about it like that. Guys, the Lord wants you to wants to give you a miracle today here on this on this Easter Sunday. And our text today contains four of them. When Jesus appeared to the disciples on the evening of Easter Sunday, he bore four presents. First, he gives us his peace. Look at verse 36 through 38. While they were while they were still talking and they were speaking to this uh, to the, the the guys that came back and reported them while they were still talking about this Jesus himself stood among them and said to them peace be with you they were startled and frightened thinking they saw a ghost he said to them why are you troubled and why do, do doubts rise in your mind By the way, I did not say this, but when Jesus was with those gentlemen, the first two, while they were sitting there eating and they realized it was Jesus and He opened up the Scriptures to them, He disappeared from their presence. Could you imagine that? You're already kind of scared. Woo! <laughs> he is gone. You know what I'm saying? Well, here, exactly the opposite. They're talking to one another and boom, He's there. That is the answer to their fright. It just adds to their fright. Wouldn't me. I've never seen my Lord. If He disappeared to me just like that, first thing I'm going to do is be scared, y'all. I, I can promise you that. I can promise you that. But when Jesus said, Peace be with you, and by the way, the title of today's message is Peace be with you. When He said, Peace be with you, it wasn't just an ordinary salutation or a polite sentiment. The disciples were terrified. Jesus just appeared to them. 
And they were in a moment of confusion and fear. There's rumors and reports were rampant about what had happened. And the lives were in jeopardy. jeopardy. Seeing the form of Jesus suddenly appear, they were terrified. Our Lord's first words were of peace. It's kind of interesting going back to, just for a moment, to Luke chapter 2. After our Lord was born, when He first came into this world. Chapter 2, verse 13, uh, there was a, it says, Suddenly a great company of, of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to, to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. Our Lord came to this world with peace. And He left this world with peace. Amen. So He gives us His peace. And it's the peace that surpasses all understanding. It's the peace that Jesus gives us. Not the absence of trouble. But the freedom to deal with those problems. Without the stress and strain. That come with worry and uncertainty. Notice his next words. Why are you troubled? Why are you doubt? Why do you doubt? Why do doubts rise up in your heart? They were afraid. They were confused. You ever been afraid and confused, guys? Oh, I have been. Yeah, I sure have been. He's saying that to us, not just the disciples. Like I said, He says to you and He gives you His peace. In the midst of your trouble and what you're going through, when, you're, when those fears and things rise up in you, can you hear Jesus? He's saying, I've overcome even death itself. I've performed history's ultimate miracle. And He says, why are you why do you worry in trouble? Why are you worried in trouble? Why do doubts rise up in your heart? Peace I give you. So He gives us His peace. But He gives us His presence. Look at verse 39 through 43. Look at my hands and feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see a ghost does not have flesh and bones as, I, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them this, his hands and his feet. And while they, were, while they still did not believe, believe it because of the uh, joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? And they gave him a, a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and he ate it in their presence. A ghost can't eat. Just can't do it. Ghosts don't have flesh and blood. Flesh and bone, excuse me. Interesting that he said flesh and bone. But I'm not going to go there right now. This is that'd be another rabbit, rabbit trail I don't need to get on right now. He went on to explain that to them is what he said. He went on to explain that his peace is available was available to them because his presence is, accept, is, is accessible to them. He said, "Behold, my hands and feet." He said, "It is I myself." You know, guys, if we would just practice the presence of Jesus in our lives, because He is here. He is here. He's in you. If you if you cried out to him, he's in you. Amen. Amen. And if we would just practice his presence in our lives, in our everyday lives, things might be a little different. Might, might, we might have a uh, make a difference in our in our actions and our attitudes. Amen. So he gives us his presence. But he he gives us his promises as well. Look at forty four. 44 and 45. He said to them, This is what I told you uh, while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, law of Moses 
the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they, they could understand the scriptures. Jesus went on to explain that by his death and resurrection, he was fulfilling the prophecies and the promises made, by, uh, made about him. In so doing, he ratified all the promises of God in the Bible that sustain us in every, our daily lives, every, daily, everyday lives. There was one man that counted over 7,000 promises made, of, made by God to you and me in the Scriptures. And we need to learn to use those Scriptures, those promises. R.A. Torrey, he said about a, a Christian leader, George Mueller, when it was laid upon him, of George Miller, the mural that is, when it was laid upon his heart to pray for anything, he would search the scriptures to find uh, to find uh, to find if there was a uh, some kind of a promise in God's God's word before he would pray. Sometimes he would search for days to find the scripture that fit the situation, and then with his Bible open and his finger on the promise, he would bring that petition before the, before the Lord and pray for that person's needs. I think we need to search God's Scripture when we go through these things, guys, because He makes those promises available for us. He gives us His promise, promises. And there is a promise for every situation, over 7,000 of them. With a little effort, we can find them. And we can go before the Lord just like uh, Mr. Mueller did and pray for those. Intercessory prayer. Amen? Amen. I think it would make a, a greater dif difference than just praying for someone. If you took the effort to look something up to help that person, I think that influences God. Amen? Amen. But He gives us His promises. And He gives us His purpose, finally. The last point I want to make is that He gives us His purpose. Look at 46 through 49. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and, and, and represent and repentance, excuse me, and repentance and forgiveness of sin will be preached in His name. To all nations, beginning at, in Jerusalem, at Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what the Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Our Lord's final words here comprise. His great commission for us. It is for us to go into the lost and dying world and proclaim this Easter message. Amen? Amen. He said that I'm going to verse 49. He said, I'm, I'm going to send you what, what my Father has promised. And he told him to say it, stay in the city. What the Father promised was the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's where that power came from. Power from on high. When Jesus was with his disciples, he told them that I must go away, I must leave, so that I and I will send back a helper. That helper being the Holy Spirit. And when he told them that not to go, not to leave the city, to stay in the city, that's where Pentecost happened. Fifty days after he was crucified. He went up on the tree. Fifty days later was the Pentecost. It's when, when Jesus sent back the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came not just living in with man, but in man from that point forward. Amen? Amen. Let's wrap this thing up now. Do you need a miracle today, guys? Amen. Amen. I do. 
And it's found in Jesus in Christ. It's found in His peace, in His presence, in His promises, and in His purpose. Amen. Amen. And it's yours for the taking. It's yours. I don't know where you're at in your life, but I can remember when I was saved. I can remember when I cried out to Jesus and I asked Him to come into my life. And He did. I remember that. For me, it was in Rockwall, Texas, 1983. June or July, I don't remember the month exactly, but... Uh, I was in a church with my wife. I promised her I'd go to church. I wasn't safe. She was. I had to make that promise or she wouldn't marry me. <laughs> but uh, I went to that church. An old scarred up preacher named Ted Hicks. I remember it. He got down at the end of the message with a thunderous voice that he had. Because he was scarred up from the sins of life. Ears Gone, lips gone, eyebrows, just from the wreck that he was in after drunk driving. But that was impactful for me, that scarred up old preacher with that thunderous voice. And when it came down, down to the, at the end of the service, he said, come. And I came, got up. I wasn't going to. But I got up because it's as if God Himself were speaking to me. And I went forward to that church and I asked Christ to come into my heart. And He did. I'd like to say that I've, nothing has changed, that, I've, I mean, that, uh, that I never didn't uh, backslide or anything like that, but I did. I strayed. I quit going to church for some time. Then I got back to my sense. I repented from that and led my family back to church. And we've been in church since. Amen? Amen. I don't know where you're at. If you'd like to ask Christ into your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. You don't have to come forward like I did. But if God is urging you and drawing you to come forward, don't tell Him no. Amen? This is also a moment where the altar's open. You need your miracle today? Bring it up to the cross. Drop it off. Give us the honor of coming beside you and praying with you to help you through, help you receive what you need from God today. If you want to ask Christ in your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Say a simple prayer like this and mean it from your heart. Just admit to him, Lord, I am a sinner. And right now, Lord, I turn from those sinful ways, that sinful life. I'm asking you to come into my heart and receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you, you died on that cross for my sins. But you rose back to life. You're living in me now. I recognize you as my God, my Lord, and my friend. And from this moment forward, I will serve only you in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. So that prayer for the first time, and most importantly than that, that uh, you felt the presence of God begin to feel the emptiness that you had. Come see you right after services. That's the most important decision you can ever make in your life, and I need to talk to you about it. Uh, my telephone number is right here if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or you can Google uh, right for Jay Cowboy Church in Terrell, Texas and it'll bring up my contact information too. Give me a call. Alright guys, at this moment in our service, on Easter Sunday, well first of all every first Sunday we have uh, communion but we also do it on Easter. Amen? So, uh, gentlemen are going uh, to come up and pass out communion. And if, you, if they don't give you one, 
give them a give them a shout. There you go, backwards. Give them a shout. Make sure you get one. Amen. Make sure everybody's joining us as a family. Brian is going to sing a song. And would you please meditate as he does? Ask God to search you. And ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Each one of us are different. When we have communion, it's important that we have forgiveness for our sins. Amen. If we do this in Bible says in Matthew 26, 26, while they were in the upper room, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Father, we love you so, so very much. And Lord, we just uh, everything that we do today is is to give you praise, Father God, to remember, Lord Jesus, what you did on that cross for us over 2,000 years ago. Lord, we earnestly wait for your return. We pray for a speedy comeback, Father God. <laughs> so Lord, just to take this as, a, as an act of sacrifice on our part. And may what we do bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' precious name. God, I'll tell you what, I want to leave you with this one thing. I forgot to mention it in the message I, I meant to. Uh, I agree with Michael Youssef. I heard him this, uh, this, this week. And what he said is that, you know, Buddha, his, Buddha's tomb is occupied right now. Confucius. His grave is occupied right now. Muhammad is still in the grave. It's occupied. But Christianity is the only religion where our God is risen. Amen. His grave is not occupied because he's not in it. That's why I only had a borrowed tomb. Amen? Let's go before the Lord and we'll just uh, get on out of here and start. We're going to have this Easter egg on just a minute. Father God, we love you so, so very much. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord Jesus, we thank you for what you did on that cross for us so that we could have a relationship with our Father once again so we would not be estranged any longer. 
So, Father, just uh, take the things that we're learning, apply them to our lives, show us how to apply them to our lives so that we can be doers of your word, not hearers only. Father, show us how we can take these things to a lost and dying world so that we can be a light on a shining light on the hill. Just uh, bringing your light to a, to a lost and dying world through the darkness of this world. And so that we can be your ambassadors. We may be the only Christ someone sees, the only Bible someone reads. So Father, just show us how to, uh, to, to be that light for the world. Father, we just, uh, until we get back up here this Thursday night for Buckhead, for next Sunday, we ask for your perfect speed and we ask for your favor in our lives. We ask this in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. All right, guys, we love you. See you next week.